Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here. Um, if you've already watched my first three photo snap videos, it basically goes over exactly how to import a photograph, how to optimize it correctly, adjust it, so the photo snap tool can produce the best possible um, output and design for your projects. And I've showed you how to actually digitize it and change some of the properties. But what I haven't gotten to yet in those first three tutorials is how to kick it up a notch. Okay, if you've been following my videos, you know that not only do I like to show you how to use a tool, I, I like to show you how to take those designs to the next level. So here we are. If you've watched the first three tutorials, we're basically in, you know how to get to this spot right here with this tree design that I've already digitized for you. What I want to show you is how to make this design a little more appealing or a, a little, make it really uh, look more like artwork that you might want to embroider out, frame, and put on your wall. From a design point of view, one of the things I don't like about this design or a lot of the photo snap designs is when we are working with photographs and we bring these photographs into the embroidery canvas and we digitize them, everything is a square box, okay? So everything that you're going to do with the way that I've showed you up to this point, um, you're always going to end up with square embroidery. Now this is great for quilt blocks, but what if you 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 want something to look really nice and you want to put some fancy borders around this are you really constrained to have to do things with square corners uh, everything looking like a a rectangle or a you know a box it's just not the best look for art in my humble opinion so I, what i want to do is i want to show you how to uh, use a a tool or two in the program a few that you've already used to kind of kick it up a notch okay so everybody knows how to get to this point now what we can't do what, what I want to show you how to do is crop this photograph or, or crop out the actual embroidery there are some cropping tools inside the embroidery canvas that you can use for your artwork you can't really use them for the embroidery let me show you if I was to if I was to photo snap this design and then decide hey I want to crop this dude out not so easy to do you know you can go to the artwork and under the crop you have all of these different cropping tools available but they're all you'll notice they're all grayed out unavailable to use and you're thinking oh man that's a bummer well we have to actually we can use these tools but we have to use the we have to use the crop tool before we photo snap this dude okay so let me go ahead I'm gonna redo this I'm gonna just get rid of this photo snap so let me kinda you don't have to do this I'm this will just get me back to the point of where we should start off cropping now of course I've already brought the as you know I've already brought the image in I've optimized it and I have brought it to the embroidery canvas if I want to do something different something a little more artistic or appealing something you may want to hang on your wall or give as a gift that's the direction I'm going what we would do is we would left click on the artwork so you would make sure that the artwork is selected you see the little black selection boxes around the artwork that's an indication that yes the artwork is selected then we're gonna go back to this art artwork drop down menu left click on that dude and then if we scroll down now to the crop tool and hover over it the crop menu we get a flyout menu with other options look at all of these different options now we can go crazy with the these and that'll be in another tutorial I'll spend more time actually going over every single one of the cropping tool options but for now let's stick to oval so I'll left click on oval and now we are in cropping mode so the cropping the, the cropping tool although it's good is not the most intuitive or a uh, full featured cropping tool I've ever seen once you start cropping something you're kind of stuck with it and if you don't look like the way that the crop looks you'll just have to 
hit the back button, you'll have to undo it and recrop it. I'll give you an example. I'll show you an example so you see what I mean. So I want to draw an oval around the tree like this and cut everything else out. If I start here and start cropping, okay, you can see I didn't get everything exactly the way I wanted it. It's like, oh, I see the effect, okay, but it's not, the selection is not correct. We'll just hit the undo button and then go back and go to artwork, crop, and I'm going to start again, but I'm going to change my starting point. So my starting point will be maybe right in here. And I'm going to left click and hold down. And so you left click, hold down. And as we start drawing the crop, you just drag it. And you can see that outline there. You just drag it to the way that you like it and let it go. Let it go. And there we go. Now that may not be perfect. So you might want to go back and do it again. You'll, you'll, you'll do this a couple times and then you'll start to really get the hang of the cropping tool. It's no big deal because remember the best tool in the program, our best friend, is that undo button. Okay, But for now I'm just going to go ahead and move on. So we've cropped out our selection and now I'm going to photo snap it again. So I'll just under the toolbox and auto digitize menu, left click auto uh, photo snap, we'll give it a second and it'll photo snap. There we've photo snapped something that looks a little bit different now and I really like this pattern that we've done okay I really like this pattern now I'm gonna change a few things I'm gonna go ahead and change the stitching color in the background like I showed you before to match what my uh, actual project would look like so let me go to uh, what design background and I'm gonna change my background color to uh, aqu turquoise or maybe uh, aqua and hit OK all right, good. Now I'm going to left click and select my stitching and maybe I'll do a purple or a light blue with that, something like that. Now you can see my photograph is still back there, so I'm not getting the true effect. So you'll want to, right here, you'll want to hide, left click that dude and that hides the bitmap. So here's what we're looking at. <clears throat> then I'm going to flip flop the embroidery. I want the background to be highlighted and I want the tree, the trunk, and the the uh, all of the uh, components of the tree, I want that to be kind of die cut out like I showed you before. So I'll right click on the embroidery and that's going to bring up the object properties. Then I'm going to left click fine and I'm going to change the background from light to dark and hit apply. And then that'll give me my, my die cut effect. Now you can see we're starting to get somewhere. This is looking a little more like art. Oh yeah, I like the way that that looks. Okay, maybe the, for me, maybe the, uh, the purple thread is a little too dark, so maybe I'll try a powder blue. Okay, we'll see how that goes. And you can just kind of select through these to see, find something that you really like. Okay, I kind of like the way that that one looked for now. Now remember, if you've if you've went through some of my other tutorials, you know that you have under the edit toolbox, we have the outline design tool. That's a tool that I really like. And I usually finish up designs by, by uh, slapping this tool on a lot of the things that I do. So let me left click outline design. And I'm going to put first, I'm going to put a satin stitch outline on this dude. And let's just do white. Okay, so I'll left click white and satin stitch. And then the offset, I don't want it to be 0.1. I don't maybe uh, come down here to 0.01 offset and hit OK and see what that looks like. And that'll finish off the outline around the entire design. Yeah, see how that kind of finishes it off? But I'm not, I don't stop there. I'm. I'm not the kind of guy that stops there. This could look even better yet. So then we would left click. Let me zoom in. And I'm going to left click the outline that we just put on it, this white outline. I'm going to left click that. And I'm going to outline that dude again. Now my intention is to put a candle wicking outline around this entire satin stitch border. But we don't have a candle wicking option here. We do have a single stitch option. I can 
slap that single stitch outline on there, then I can go in and change it to a candle wicking border, which, which is what I'll do. So single stitch, and then we don't want an offset of 0.01. Let's go back to 0.1. So let me kick this up to 0.1, okay? And then that candle wicking border, maybe I'm, I'll turn that back to a nice blue color. And these can be changed later, just whatever strikes your fancy. Let me hit OK. And it's going to produce, a, let me zoom in, a, just a nice boring single stitch outline around the satin stitch outline. But then we can left click that dude and then right click it to bring up the object properties. And you just change then now, change the single stitch outline to a candle wicking outline. And the colonial, let me hit apply. You can see the by default it's that colonial 4.5 millimeter. See how big those are and how far it spaces those away. Now I can change the spacing if I like here. I just come down on the spacing and see what happens. Come down on the spacing, knock those a little closer together, maybe a little further apart, and see if you know, see if you like that. Let me hit OK and I'll zoom back out. Now that's starting to look really nice, okay? And then we can start playing with the colors. Okay, let me change the color in here again. You know, you just keep changing them until you really find something that you like. Something that really, you know, really pops. Okay, this looks... Now this is starting to really, in my opinion, this is really starting to look like art, folks. Alright, so... Let me see. You know, I, I, I kind of like that look right there. I kind of like like that look right there and then let me zoom out and I'm gonna show my hoop so you can see how big this is and of course this is the jumbo hoop and this is going outside the jumbo hoop so that's way too big so I'll just hit a I'll just draw a selection box around everything or you can you can hold down control and A for select all and then I'm just gonna make everything smaller to of course fit inside my hoop just drag this down. Let that dude work. See, everything's going to fit inside my hoop now. All right, and then we can zoom in here and you can kind of see the detail. Everything looks nice. This is going to be a nice looking piece of art. This is the, the last tutorial in the photo snap. Um, kicking it up a notch. Just kicking it up a notch to make your designs look even spicier. This is Clint Seely, and thank you for watching.